Come. There's a guy. Um, do it. Uh, do it. No, I don't think it's going to go up. It's okay. Stay alone, Sean. <laughs> <coughs> This ain't going down, no? Doesn't matter? You want it down? Doesn't matter. It's okay. Sir. Can you catch? Because... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. Because uh, it's all your stuff. It's good. <laughs> Physics. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله جل وعلا وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد فإني أحمد الله سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره على ما من به علينا من نعم كثيرة ظاهرة وباطنة من أعظم هذه النعم أن هدانا الله سبحانه وتعالى لهذا الدين القويم هذا الدين الذي ارتداه الله سبحانه وتعالى لعباده هذا الدين القويم الذي أكمله الله سبحانه وتعالى ولا يقبل من عباده سواه كما قال تعالى إن الدين عند الله الإسلام وكما قال تعالى ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين وكما قال تعالى اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا I praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى and thank him as he subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves all praises falhamdu kulluhu lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa laysa li ghayrihi the absolute praises for Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one shares with him in that in that right I praise him and thank him and we should all give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he has conferred upon us many bounties, endless bounties. The greatest of all is to be guided to Al-Islam, this upright religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased for his servants. This upright religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfected. This upright religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent as a mercy to mankind. This upright religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept anything but it from his servants. And we have some of the ayats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna al-Dina Allah al-Islam. The religion with Allah 
what Allah accepts from His servants is Islam. Likewise, in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever choose to be on a religion other than Islam will never be accepted from such a person and on the hera- in the hereafter he will be amongst the losers. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَدِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا this day I have perfected your religion and completed my favors upon you and I choose Islam for you as a religion. فَنَحْمَدُهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ عَلَىٰ هَذِهِ النِّعْمَ الْعَظِيمَةِ وَهِيَ مِنَّةٌ وَهَدِيَّةٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ لَيْسَ لِأَحْوَالِنَا وَلَا أَنْسَابِنَا هُدِينَا ولكنها منة وهدية من الله سبحانه وتعالى يتفضل بها على من يشاء من عباده As we hear and we heard and we will continue to hear from our noble scholars that to be a Muslim has nothing to do with who you are, what country you come from or your achievements in this life but rather is a gift from Allah سبحانه وتعالى He bestowed upon whom He, he wills then it is incumbent upon us to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being Muslims. Because this is the religion that guarantees peace, security, especially we live in a time of turmoil. A lot of Muslim lands, they go into chaos and fighting and turmoil and trials. May Allah make it easy for them. May Allah make it easy for the believers. But Islam guarantees that security, that peace of mind, that stability, progress, joy, happiness in this life, yet the everlasting joy and happiness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the muttaqun, those who uh, learn Islam and take it from its proper sources, the book of Allah, the sound sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the sound understanding of as salaf wa salih, the companions that which the companions they were upon at the first place and the tabi'oon and the tabi'oon and the great a'imma of the deen. Anyone who adhere to the deen of Allah, apply it sincerely for Allah in accordance to what Allah has legislated, they will have nothing but what we have mentioned. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-Nahl, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَ وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنَحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاةٌ طَيِّبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees and a promised a pure life. A pure life for who? For the one who do righteous deeds. Man amila salihan. Whether it be he or she, a male or a female, while they are upon the sound aqidah, it's very important, not just do righteous deeds upon any other creed. It has to be upon the sound creed, the sound belief. Aqeedah to Salaf, the creed of the Salaf, that which the Prophet ﷺ left his noble companions upon. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُونَ بِإِحْسَانِ رضي الله عنهم وردوا عنه الآية In the Ayah 100 in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that He is pleased with certain people. And they are pleased with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has prepared for them gardens of paradise. And that's the ultimate success. Who are these people? Once again, has nothing to do with their colors, has nothing to do with their tribalism, with their tribes they came from, has nothing to do with their countries, has nothing to do with their achievements as related to the worldly affairs, has to do with what Allah says in this ayah. The foremost who accept Islam from the muhajirun, those who migrated from Mecca to al Madina, Al-Muhajirun, Sahaba, Wal-Ansar, those who supported the Prophet Sallallahu they opened their hearts and they opened their, 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 their homes and they supported the Prophet Sallallahu they supported the believers, they supported the deen of Allah, Al-Ansar, the inhabitants of al Madina. And Allah says, and those وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ And those also 
who follow them exactly in faith. They follow them in the creed that they were upon. We want to be because Allah has made it a condition. If you want to earn the pleasure of Allah, as they did, the Sahaba, they did earn the pleasure of Allah. Allah is pleased with them and they pleased with Him. If anyone wants to, to earn this pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they have to follow exactly what the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they were upon. The Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah, the ulama they mentioned in the Aqeedah first. We have to study the creed because the creed is very important. Shaykh Saleh al fawzan Ta'ala always mentioned this. Shaykh bin Baz, al Uthaymin, al Albani, all of our noble mashayikh, and the Aqeedah, al Sahiha, he al Asas, al Ladi Tubna Ali, Jamir al Ahmal, Sahatan wa Fasada, Kabul and Waradda. That the sound creed is the foundation that all of the deeds are built upon. If the, if the creed is sound, then the deeds, inshallah ta'ala, if they are done sincerely for Allah and in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they will be accepted. And therefore a person will benefit from that and will be rewarded. He will see the, the fruits in this life and yet the great reward on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Al-Aqidah muhimma jiddan ya ikhwan. Like the creed and studying the creed and understanding what the what the Prophet ﷺ left the Sahaba upon is very important for us and we should make it our priority. We should have books of Aqeedah, the classes that teach the Aqeedah in our Masajid, the Masajid of Ahlul Sunnah, the Masajid of the people who adhere to the way of the Salaf. Well, Aqeedah, كما قال الشيخ الفوزان حبيب الله تعالى توقيفية لا تؤخذ من المنامات ولا من آراء الرجال ولا من الاجتهادات فما دامت أنها تعنى بأمور الغيب فليس فيها إلا قال الله قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عند عقيدة since it deals with the matters of the unseen so there is no room for it for اجتهاد no room for dreams and and, 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 and traditions and what these people are upon or what this man said but rather it's what Allah said. That's where the Aqeedah is taken from its proper sources. The Book of Allah and the Sound Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for each and every bounty that we enjoy and many are the bounties of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And yet this bounty of Al-Islam is the greatest, but all of the favors of Allah are great. If you try to count the blessings and the favors of Allah, you will never be able to do so. But let us try our best to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to praise Him and thank Him subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessings. One of the blessings and the ni'am is the like of these gatherings. Alhamdulillah, they gather us as we see brothers coming from different areas. And this is only the first night in this seminar uh, that is organized by our brothers whom we love for the sake of Allah here at Masjid al Rahmah. Actually, when I come here, it's like it's emotional to me, you know. This is my home, you know. Subhanallah, like coming back here, it's. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm managing to speak right now because it's emotional to see the brothers, to see, mashallah, the effort still continues. And I would like to relate to you the salam of our noble Shaykh Al Walid, Shaykh Rabia, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, Shaykh Muhammad bin Ali, and Shaykh Ubaid, and also our brother Ashraf Al Bayoumi, mashallah. They all give you the salam. Alhamdulillah, and they're happy that we are here and we, uh, we're going to meet once again in the like of this seminar, inshallah ta'ala, in which we should make dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it beneficial for us. Yet there is so many aspects that we gain. First knowledge, that's the most important thing. That's why we're here. We're here so we can learn together. Our teachers is the scholars, the ulama of the deen. We read from their books and we share with you 
what, what Allah enabled us to present, inshallah ta'ala, for ourselves first and for all of you. So we're studying together, inshallah ta'ala, in this uh, noble seminar that we ask Allah subhanahu ta'ala to put that which is beneficial on, on our tongues. Those brothers, the like of our brother Farid, Abdullah, who is here, alhamdulillah, and the like of our brother Musa Richardson, who's on his way, and likewise our brother Abul Hassan Malik, who will participate, uh, and uh, Hassan al-Somali, and our brother, the Imam of the Masjid, uh, Umar Queen, hafidhahullah. May Allah put on our tongues that which is beneficial for us. And may Allah protect our tongues from any mistakes. But yet, we're human. We have deficiencies and shortcomings. If you make mistakes, then those who know the mistakes, please point it out in a nice way so we can address it, we correct it, so that the people be upon insight, upon clarity. So these seminars, the Ikhwan, are very important. They have a great benefit. Alhamdulillah. For us to come and, and, and get the opportunity to, to have these lectures one after the other. And because alhamdulillah, there are classes in this masjid, alhamdulillah. Uh, if it's not every day, maybe uh, most of the, the days of the week. But the seminar has another taste. Because, alhamdulillah, I find people, more people come in and uh, more people having, you know, notes. The notebooks and they take notes. Now it's the technology. It's not just the notes, notebooks. It's notepads now, and, and uh, what they call them, the iPads and smartphones. How do you Yes, you can benefit from the technology if you bring the iPad and and write down, take notes. Alhamdulillah. And this is a ni'mah because when you see the person next to you taking notes, and you you take notes too, and we see when you see a number of people coming. That encourages you, give you encouragements, and make you feel that you are a part of a, of a, of a larger family, alhamdulillah. And keep in mind, we are a family. Even though we may be far away as related to zip codes, and we will live in states, or even countries and continents, but though the people of Ahlul Sunnah or Jama'ah, they are, their hearts are together. They love one another for the sake of Allah. So we... In the like of these seminars, we do visit one another. And this is another great ni'mah. As long as we do it for the sake of Allah, we be sincere. As long as we be sincere, there is a great reward. Now, now we're going to come and participate. Alhamdulillah, listen to some talks, alhamdulillah, in different topics. Especially these topics in this seminar. A very important reminder for all of us. But then we, we see these beautiful faces, people that we didn't see for a couple of months, some for a couple of years. Alhamdulillah, and we exchange the love and the, the greetings and the hugs and all of this. And you see on the faces of the people who Allah wants good for them. You see on their faces that love. And that's, I'm going to read to you right now from the work of our noble Shaykh Al-Alama, Abi Muhammad Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, Hafidhahullah ta'ala wa matta'ahu. بالصحة والعافية وغفر له ولوالديه وللمسلمين والمسلمات as he mentioned, I mean, as he mentioned in, his, in the explanation of عقيدة السلف أصحاب الحديث the explanation the Shaykh explained the book عقيدة السلف the creed of the Salaf the people of Hadith by Imam al-Sabuni رحمه الله the great Imam and Imam Abi Uthman Ismail ibn Abdul Rahman al-Sabuni رحمه الله تعالى one of the great scholars of the Salaf in his book عقيدة السلف he brought the aqidah that every Muslim should know and should be upon because this is the creed that the Sahaba they were upon. And these are the best people. We, we are ordered to follow their example, to emulate their example, to be on their footsteps. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا If they believe exactly in what you believe in, they are rightly guided. So those who want to be upon guidance, there is no other way. Because the path of Allah is one. Siratullah wahid. Laysa indana siratat. Kama qala Shaykh Rabih Havid Allah Ta'ala fi raddihi ala ad-dal al-mubtadir Abdul Rahman Abdul Khalid. Long time ago when the Shaykh refuted this Hizbi Ikhwani Abdul Rahman Abdul Khalid who as relate to the people of innovation 
they want to s- split the Muslims and call the Muslims to the bid'ah and innovations instead to keep the Muslims and call the Muslims to be on the path of Allah. The only path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوا وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُولَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is my path that is straight. Straight. So there is no shortcuts, there is no back roads or no, somebody come tell you, yeah, there is that path, but there is another one. Only few people know about it. We'll take you there. Who are you? you tell them you have an ayah. Allah said clearly there is one path and you know shortcuts. We're not going to Walmart. We want to be on the path to Jannah, man. We're talking about, you know, another path. There is no other path. There is what Allah says. That's what the Muslims should follow. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us after he, out of mercy upon his servants, command them and order them to adhere to his path, the path of Allah. Not the path of Tabligh, the path of Ikhwan, the path of Sophia, the path of Rafida, the path of Path, and they still claim it there. SubhanAllah, any path that goes against the path of Allah, there is no good in it. <coughs> Just keep that. There is no good in it. The good is in the path of Allah, being on that path. And Allah warned us, He says, and be aware of the other paths. Because if you embark upon any one of them, certainly they take you f- away, further away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh Abdullah al-Bukhari, uh, once he gave us a talk, maybe in this masjid or in Philadelphia or in any other state, through Telelink, because when the ulama, they gave us talks, they gave talks to Ahl sunnah to the Muslims in general, in America, but now in the world, before we used to be just as, you remember those old black phones or gray? Hello, Sheikh, check, check the connection. Uh, and it's only us listening. You remember those days? Now, alhamdulillah, you, I'm sure now when you call the Sheikh, people in Indonesia are listening, in Yemen, in Brazil, in Ireland, south or north, in Germany, in Pakistan, in Turkey, in India. SubhanAllah, in Canada, people everywhere are listening. And this is a ni'mah from Allah. This is one of the, the, the virtues of, of, and the good size of the internet, because the internet get good size and get a lot of, all of bad, bad ones as well. And by the way, there is a, a talk that was given to us last night by the Sheikh Muhammad al faifi Maybe I see brothers shaking their heads. See, they already listened to it. On, 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 in, online, and that's a very important uh, talk on the internet, the dangers of the internet, and the good and the benefits of the internet. Inshallah ta'ala, that lecture may be available soon, inshallah ta'ala. One brother is on his way. Alhamdulillah, they're driving, may Allah bring them safely. As some brothers from Georgia and Florida, they're already here, alhamdulillah. Get to know your guests like these young brothers here, you see them? Right there. Ahmed, Ibrahim, and huh? Now, so these are brothers from Masjid Tawheed, Alhamdulillah, from Atlanta. And there is more coming, inshallah. So this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to be here and to meet with our brothers. So the Shaykh, he mentioned that, inshallah, we will get that available for you to see how important for us to know that, that information about this gadget and this technology and these things that, <laughs> subhanAllah, almost everyone has them now in, his, in their homes, in their pockets. But if we don't use them properly, they can be a source for destruction for so many people, or at least a source of, you know, keep a person away from doing what they were created for. So we go back to what we're talking about, right? This the likes of this seminars. Alhamdulillah, it's a great opportunity once again to visit one another and to see those people whom we love. So we travel for long ways. So let us correct our intentions so we can get the like of this, of these benefits, as I'm going to read to you from the Aqidah, the explanation of the Aqidah of the Salaf. Al Imam al Sabuni, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, <coughs> he says, in the chapter when he will talk about Akhlaq, Akhlaq al Salaf. That was chapter 20, if I'm not mistaken, because we, right, Jama? We just did this class on, uh, on, on, on Tuesday. Ibrahim, you attended that class? Mm, sure. 
He was cold that night. <laughs> you gotta find excuses for your brothers. And yes, he was cold. He was cold. Alhamdulillah. They usually attend the class. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Ahmed, you were there, right? He was very cold. Okay. That's right. He was very cold. So, that was a chapter. It's, it's in the book, Aqiyyad al-Salaf. When the Imam al-Sabuni, he mentioned the akhlaq of the Salaf. Because Allah guides us to, to, to the way of the Salaf. We follow the way of the Sahaba. But we need to know what they were upon. It's not just to be Salafi by affiliation. Salafi, Salafi. But what is the akhlaq? But a person, he says he's a pan Salafiyyah, he cheats, deception, willing to fight for no reason or one whatsoever, uh, grudge, this. What, what, who's, the, who's the Salaf that used to have these things? The Salaf, they apply the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْرَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah mentions three qualities of Shaykh Muhammad, Muhammad bin Hadi al Madkhali Habir wa Ta'ala in the ayah in Surah Al Imran. In the ayah in Surah Al Imran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the Jannah is for these people. And He mentions some of their qualities. Yunfiqoon, they spend, is Sarra'i wa Darra. Wal Kadimin al Ghayr. Their qualities also, look, they repress anger. They repress anger. They repress anger. You're going to call it that? Or? Says, Look, they repress the anger. Yes, they get angry, but they don't act upon it. This is the first category, which is good. For a person, yes, you make them angry, whatever you send them a bad text, or look at them, or whatever. They get angry, but they don't act upon it. They keep it to themselves. But there is another level that are better than this one. There are those, yes, they forgive those who do wrong, do, do wrong to them. And there is a third level. Those who actually, not only that they don't get mad, or they don't act upon anger, and they forgive, and they, they be nice to those who do wrong to them. Now I'm speaking Chinese for real. <laughs> Mixed with Korean and Urdu. And, because who is this person that he's going to do you bad and he just still smile in his face and be nice to him? Huh? Well, that's what the Quran says. We need to check ourselves when we hear the ayahs, when we hear the explanation, when we hear the statements of the ulama. We need to see where do we stand where do we stand of the application? It's not just about, no, alhamdulillah, you're growing a beard, you're wearing a thobe, mashallah, salafi, allahu akbar, you love the salaf. But where is the application? Daily. Not whenever we feel like smile and we be selective. No, it has to become a habit. It should run in our veins, the akhlaq of the salaf. He says, from their akhlaq, he mentioned Allah. This is only like the point number 20. This is like the, from the akhlaq a lot. I'm just going to this. He says, ماذا قال? نعم. و... I have to turn the page. قال ويتحابون في الدين ويتباغدون فيه. They love one another in Islam. Not for no other reasons. For the sake of Allah. And even when they hate, hate certain people, they hate them for the sake of Allah. قال الشيخ ربيع حمد الله ورد التحاب والتباغض في ذات الله تبارك وتعالى وحثنا رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام على المحبة said نعم loving certain people and while hating others for the sake of Allah is mentioned in the book of Allah and mentioned in the sunnah of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم for instance in the from the ahadith the first hadith is agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Anas radiallahu an, that the Prophet sallallahu said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه None of you will complete the iman until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And we need to understand this, and your love for your brother or your love for yourself. Likewise, من السبع الذين يضلهم الله في ظله 
يوم لا ظل الا ظله رجلان تحابا في الله اجتمع عليه وافترق عليه. Likewise in this hadith, there is also agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim on his authenticity uh, from the way of Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, that the Prophet sallallahu when he mentioned seven types of people, they will be admitted in the shade of Allah. On that day, it is a very hard day. May Allah make it easy on us and make us from them. I mean, that there are two people who they are together for the sake of Allah. Not for dunya, we, we, man, we went back, way back. That's my man, that's my homeboy. Oh, your homeboy and he has bad akhlaq, he's still your homeboy. If he's really your friend and you care about him, give him advice. Tell him how you treat the people the way you treat the people like this. How can you come to the masjid with an, with an arrogant face? How can you come to a Salafi masjid and don't give salam to certain people? And they still you find some people who want to hug him, that's my boy, that's my man. Okay, if, you, if, if you're truthful in that claim, why don't you give him advice? Tell him, Akhi, come in. Who are you coming here to? Even if you pass by people in the street, you don't, subhanAllah, if they say good morning, you say, how you doing? Now a person is going to come and he's going to cheat the people and he's going to deal with them and in a most vicious way. Still some of us are just like, no, he's okay. No, he's not. That action is not okay. You love one another for the sake of Allah. Listen to this hadith Qudsi. It's very important that we have to have a good intention when we come and visit one another or when we say we love one another when we say I'm going to help so and so. I'm going to be there for you. What are you doing it for? If you're doing it for Allah, listen to the great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wajabat mahabbati lil mutahabbina fiya, wal mutajalisina fiya, wal mutazawirina fiya, wal mutabadilina fiya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, my love is granted. No doubt, ya khwan. Is granted, but for who? For those who love one another for my sake. And when they sit together, they sit together for the sake of Allah. When they visit one another, they visit one another for the sake of Allah. And then they make themselves available to help others, to assist others, whether with their wealth, with their skills, strength, advice, and the like. But they do all this for the sake of Allah. We have another hadith. That the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned that Allah say on Yom Al Qiyamah, Ain al Mutahabun bi Jalali, Al Yom Udilluhum fi Dilli, Yom Al Adilla illa Dilli. Akhrajahu Muslim. Min Hadith Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say on Yom Al Qiyamah, Where are those who, and Allah a'lamu bihim, where are those who used to love one another for my sake? Not for no other, for color, for this, my home, my tribe, this, because that, la, dunya, for the sake of Allah, is upon the haq, is upon da'wah salaviyya. And keep in mind, ya akhi, this doesn't mean because a person is salafi, he's a perfect. Yes, salafi got issues. I know I do have a lot of issues. No, we got issues, we got problems. Some people think like, okay, salafi, that's it. He doesn't have to, to make mistakes. Ya akhi, al khata warid. Every one of us make mistakes, but we have to at least adorn ourselves with these beautiful manners of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Where are those who they used to love one another for my sake? This day I will admit them to my shade, whereas there is no shade except for my shade. Hey now, you love for the sake of Allah. Something happened between your brother, deal with it. But don't let the shaitan try to install the hatred. Get the chip of love and put another one of hatred. Man, I'm not in Chinatown. This is something else. You have a, a laptop and you want to upgrade from Windows 6 to Windows 7, and you go to someone who knows and he, put, he takes one little piece and put another one. But it's not... When it comes to the heart, we have only one heart, and we have to safeguard that heart, and we have to protect that heart, because once you allow something in the heart, what guarantees you have that you may be able to get it out of your heart? If we love one another, we love for the sake of Allah. You're upon the kitab, the sunnah, the way of the salaf, I love you. Yes, but you may do something harmful to me. I may say something that you don't approve of, but we're still brothers. We're still brothers. I suppose to speak for 15 minutes. You think that's been 15 minutes? 
Or 20? No. Huh? No. Not enough. No, people. Inshallah. Ala ayin. Asa'u Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's had an oyyakum in al-mutahabbina fi. We ask Allah to make us anew from those who love one another for the sake of Allah. And they visit one another for the sake of Allah. And when they sit together, they have good time for the sake of Allah. And they respect one another. And they aid one another in all means within their abilities. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again to make this seminar a very beneficial one. As Allah wa tawfiq. We ask Allah to grant us all beneficial knowledge that is coupled with righteous actions. And we ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the understanding in this religion. As the Prophet sallallahu says in the hadith of Abi, uh, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, May yurid Allahu bi khairan yufaqihu bi deen. If Allah wants good for a person, we'll give them the correct understanding of the religion. May Allah give us the sound understanding. But we have to make the efforts and we have to follow the means. Because it does not rain gold nor silver. You have to go out there and work for, the, for that. Likewise, we have to find time, attend the classes, be serious, open our hearts before we open our eyes and get the books, get the material of Ahlul Ilm and uh, ask Allah for tawfiq. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslim. So as we mentioned, inshallah ta'ala, uh, let us prepare ourselves. Yeah, we we'll prepare ourselves for this seminar. Yeah, let's every one of us do with their dear means. Those who are uh, able to help, let them help. Check with the imam, with the administration, make yourself available. And then, as for the rest of us, let us come here with cheerful faces. Let us uh, greet the, uh, one another with, with love as we mean it, and, and we should meet everyone with love and with respect, especially our elders, until we make sure they are okay. Uh, we have mercy on the youth and the little ones, be nice to them. If we see faces, especially uh, us that from this community, we see faces that are new, we come to them, we welcome them. Hayyakallah, barakallahu feek, barakallahu khairan. What can we do for you? Aina. It's not just about coming and get listening, but also when we come to listen, we have to free our minds. Because that's what makes the difference in the end of the day. We should free our minds before we come to the talk. 
Because if you attend one talk in the day, but your day, your hair, your body, your heart, your mind, is more important than being here all these three days or four days. While your mind is somewhere else. Now take notes, share them with your family, alhamdulillah, share them with others, especially in our time, you hear something nice, send the Twitter, there are a lot of people out there that they would love to be here, but they can't, they don't have the means. And this is a ni'mah from Allah. And keep in mind, the akhwan, as the ulama, they mention the, for the salaf, if we have a sincere intention, if we have a sincere intention, and we should, because this is one of the conditions of the acceptance of the deeds, whatever you do to get to this seminar and to these classes, you'll be rewarded. Even if you stop at Walmart and buy a pencil and a sharpener, you will be rewarded for that. Because you're buying that pencil and sharpener for what? For knowledge. You're not the one to draw pictures. For knowledge, to write down information on aqidah, on tawheed, on this, on fiqh, on akhlaq, on raqaiq. The guess, when you, when you just remember the intention. You're coming for this lecture and, and you, 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 you stop to pump gas. Every dime and a penny you get rewarded for by Allah. You get some food, whatever, a coffee, whatever it is, whatever sandwich, whatever, you get rewarded because whatever you're doing, whatever money you spend, any efforts, you're doing it for the sake of Allah. You're rewarded, subhanAllah, ya. Allah Akbar, Allah Rahim. And look at the ni'mah of Allah upon us. See, I said I was going to stop, but Allah Okay, okay. Somebody tell me, just be quiet. You know? But alhamdulillah, we're just sharing with you some benefits. Look at us now. It's so easy for us to, to come to the classes, to come to the masjid, to come to the seminar. As related, the people before us, subhanAllah, ya akhi, Allah musta'an, they have to travel months, years, on foot. Some of them, they could afford a donkey. And who knows, that donkey might die after a couple of weeks. Where he died? Downtown? By the next bus stop? No, die in the desert. Some of the ulama, they, they subhanAllah, they, they, they urinate blood. They get sick on a journey. Some of them, they have to save their urine to drink it because there is no water. They went through a lot of hardship. We one click. You got the whole classes of Sheikh Al-Bani right there on your iPhone, smartphone. What is it, iPhone or Android, whatever it is. Smartphone. But how do we benefit? Especially we drive. Like the Sheikh is mentioned, Sheikh Mohammed al faifi yesterday, he says, Look, Akhi, if you make it a habit, you can gain a lot of knowledge. That smartphone, that, uh, what they call them, those MP3s, whatever now. We have so many gadgets. You go, you people that used to go to Radio Shack, now you go to Walmart, you go to Best Buy. There's so many ways you can go and just ask them. A non-Muslim, tell them, listen, man, I just want to, I want to, uh, I have some, some audios, you know, music, nah. Audios, they don't like that, okay? Audios, I want to play them in my house, in my car while I'm drive, driving to listen. He's going to take you right to the aisle till you take this. 9.95. There are ulama of the past, they used to travel nine years. Some of them, they travel for a couple years only to get to the land where the sheikh is, and they find the sheikh died. Like one of the ulama, he traveled from Maghrib from whether from Algeria, from Morocco, then on foot until when he get to Baghdad and there was a big janazah. The janazah of the Sheikh he wanted to sit and learn with. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. We, we have knowledge in our homes. Why are you eating? Why are you driving? Why are you shopping? Why are you jogging? Why are you running? What is the himma? We need that lofty ambition. You go to work, you got 30, uh, 30 minutes, wallahi, some of us, we just sit there and angry on the traffic. Ah, come on, I gotta do something about it. Do something about you. Listen to Sheikh Ben Baz. You will wish if there is more traffic. I know. You wish. 
when you go to the dentist appointment or whatever and they tell you wait and 10 minutes later you're all worked out man come on are they playing games why you call me why I call him but if you're listening to Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen huh? you know, you'll be there the whole day they didn't call you they said we forget about you don't worry about it it's okay I've been here for how long you don't even notice because you're you're, you're what you're listening to the knowledge I know Subhanallah. So let us uh, take advantage of these great opportunities, Ya Khwan. You got that smartphone? Be smarter than the smartphone. Don't let the smartphone take you away from the remembrance of Allah. You want to check the sports and who made it to the championship and who went through the, the next round. Where, where do you stand yourself? Did you make it through just Amma? Did you know Surah Al-Fatiha have been Muslims for I don't know how many years? Do I know one mas'ala in fiqh with the adilla? Huh? If somebody saw me making wudu, say, Akhi, why are you uh, washing your face like that? Uh, I'll tell you next time. Why can't I tell him that time? Tell him, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala Abu Huraira, Ana Abu Huraira, Kada fi Sahihi, Kada fi Bulugh al-Maram, Fi Kada. And tell him, this is why I'm washing my face this way. Why you pray like that? This is why, because the Prophet ﷺ says, Sallu kama ra'aytu muni wa salli. Why you don't raise your hands like uh, many people do? And why you don't celebrate the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ? This is the best of mankind. And you have an answer based on the adilla. May Allah have mercy on us. Sadr wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad. Ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت